So welcome, 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 caribou. Welcome, bienvenue, wherever this finds you uh, in the world. Uh, I'm Leanne Reagan, and you are in the Learning and Development Roundtable session. Today, we're focusing on team building, and I have a very special guest, Emmanuel Jal. Uh, now, I'll tell you more about how he's going to uh, participate because of time zones, we were a bit challenged. Um, but welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so delighted that you took time out of your busy day uh, to join us. Uh, so let me just share my screen here. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So just give me uh, a thumbs up in the chat if you can see the uh, the screen just let me know if you can see the PowerPoint there and uh, for folks who are uh, just joining us perhaps for the first time uh, know that we are recording uh, and I will uh, share the audio recording and the video recording with you uh, as well as the chat so sometimes I ref I'm referring to what people say in the chat um, so you can always look to the chat later for that. So welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so Jal, so I'm curious. So how many people, just tell me in the chat, uh, have you heard of Jal? Do you know of the amazing human that is Emmanuel Jal? Just put a yes or no in the chat there. Have you heard of him before? This is a picture uh, of Jal and I in, uh, where were we? In Abu Dhabi. Uh, he was performing at a UN conference. So Kanako, Kanako, excuse me if I'm saying your name wrong, um, hasn't heard of Jal. Uh, anyone else? New to Donna, okay, new to Irene, okay. Uh, well, you're in for a treat. Um, he is an absolutely spectacular uh, human being and has lots and lots of different roles that he plays. So Again, thank you for joining our Learning and Development Roundtable. I am the founder and facilitator of the Roundtable, and I've been running this, I, I think we're, I should count, I, th we're, I think we're coming up on eight years now. Uh, and it's a place for people who are interested in learning, who are interested in training, who are interested in education, who are interested in looking at different ways to tackle uh, the pressing social problems of today. So um, I know that we've got lots of uh, social change folks on the call. So super uh, excited and delighted to have you here. Um, so today, the, uh, the roadmap, our rough roadmap, is, uh, of course, to share a space with Jal. Uh, so I actually pre-recorded an interview with him. Otherwise, it would have meant um, him getting up at something like 3 a.m. Um, I'm mm -hmm. hoping one day technology can help us with uh, time zone issues, but until then. Um, I see a couple people are unmuted, so I'm just going to mute you. Just, um, but if you do have a question, feel free to to unmute yourself and ask, or to put it in the chat there. So we're gonna, um, I'll show you the video for Jet from Jal, and I will uh, unmute us every ten. It's about, I think the, the video is about 35 minutes. My interview with him, so I'll I'll stop the video every 10 minutes or so, and we can um, jump in with discussion and, and such, just to keep it uh, engaging. And then looking at getting your team from ugla to fugla. Uh, we'll talk about your best friend and your worst enemy when you're trying to do team building. And we'll look at uh, what a healthy team looks like and then how to re rejuvenate a team that might be tired or lagging. So that's the plan for today. Um, a little bit about me before I ask about you. Uh, I focus on three areas. So I design and deliver customized learning solutions for clients. Uh, one area that I focus on is working better together. So that focuses on team building, conflict resolution, communications, uh, change management, things like that. Then I also work with clients on uh, teaching them tech tools for ease and efficiency, tech tools for learning, etc. cetera. Uh, and then I work with subject matter experts who need to be able to learn how to design and deliver really powerful uh, learning uh, uh, training workshops and webinars and online learning, etc. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, 
I would love to know from yourself, um, and some of you have already put this, which is great. Um, where are you? Where are you in the world? Um, and uh, uh, let us know what city or what town you're in. Um, I know we've got people in Nairobi, Geneva, Tokyo so far. Um, please feel free to use the, the chat. Um, Irene is coming to us from Greece. Uh, we've got Donna from Kingston, Jamaica. Welcome, Donna. Uh, we've got Katerina from Belgrade. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Charlotte from, uh, from Nairobi. Malcolm from, hi, hi, Malcolm. Nice to see you from Nairobi. Uh, let's see, uh, Christine and John and Suresh all from Nairobi. So welcome. Um, just delighted that you're here. We've got Florence joining us and Amanda. Um, Harpreet is also here from Nairobi. Uh, welcome. Um, let me know, did, have you, um, how many roundtables have you attended? Um, is, this, is this your first roundtable? Have you been to a couple of others? Um, let me know in the chat. How many roundtables have you been to? Uh, so Sophia is saying her first. Um, che is saying, uh, Solima is the second. Irene is third. Um, Mary, this is your first. Uh, we've got Aved is two. Someone's saying, Millicent's saying a few. Christina's their second, third, fourth. Malcolm, fourth. Wonderful, wonderful. Great, great. And um, tell me a little bit about why you're here today. What, what made you carve out time uh, to join us today? What are you interested in learning about? Feel free to put that in the chat. Oh, Veronica, this is your fourth one. Fantastic, welcome. And John, this is your first. Special welcome to you. Uh, so what, what made you, of all the things that you could be doing right now, um, just put a note, drop a note in the chat. What makes you, what made you decide to, to spend your time with us today? What are you hoping to learn about virtual team building? Oh, we've got Mac joining us. Welcome, Mac. Um, so I was just saying I have issues within the section uh, about working better, to, working together, okay. Anything else? Suresh, welcome. I see you've just joined us. Anything else that you are focused on in terms of what, what you're hoping to get out of today? And maybe for some of you, you just needed a break from all the things that are happening in the world right now. Such a, I, I sometimes say to clients, it feels like gravity is gonna stop uh, working tomorrow. Uh, okay, so uh, Diana saying to learn. Awesome. Awesome. Kanako is saying to learn new tools and ways of doing virtual team building. Great. Um, Ulf is saying to be a better manager. Great. Malcolm saying to keep the, the team motivated. Harpreet to improve on conflict resolution. Great. Mary to learn work well during these challenging times. Yes. And also take a break. Excellent. Uh, and Sophia is saying uh, tips and tricks about staying better connected with my team without having to organize Zoom meetings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Death by Zoom. Hey. Uh, and Doris is saying to learn from the team. Uh, Salima, it's, it's sometimes challenging to work with a team virtually. Absolutely. So um, particularly if this is your first meeting, know that we've done, I've done a few sessions. I think this is our third or four, maybe fourth session on team building and working virtually with teams. So I will, uh, I will share those resources um, later on and I'll tell you in a moment just um, how to get those resources. Um, but in uh, before we do that, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. And uh, if you're comfortable, only do this if you're comfortable. Um, I thought, um, particularly because for some of you, um, oh, hi, Megan, nice to see you online. Welcome. Um, for some of you, this will be your very first introduction to Jal, um, the remarkable human being that he is. So I thought we could start with a little bit of a dance party. And uh, I'm going to play my favorite, favorite, favorite um, song by Emmanuel Jal. Um, so I'm going to put that on in just a second. So if you're, if you're comfortable, feel free to, um, to put your video on because we're going to have a little bit of a dance party here. So let me just play this here in a sec. So if you're comfortable, uh, feel free to put your, your video on and um, let me just share this here. Okay. So just give me a thumbs up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm looking for some. 
Just give me um, a yes or a thumbs up in the chat if you can hear Jal singing. Who's looking for peace? Maybe together we could make the war cease. Now we can send mankind to the moon. And we can reach to the bottom of the sea. That's why it's really kind of baffles me. That we cannot end wars and bring peace. And we cannot change the way people live. Way to go, Mary. I see you, Dora. So if we sit back, chill out and relax. Aww, you guys are so good. Okay, feel free to take a seat. Oh, Amanda, it's so lovely to see you with your little one. And uh, absolutely no judgment if you kept your video off. I know dancing is, is not for everyone. Hopefully you were shaking your shoulders just a little bit there if you're comfortable doing that. Um, just going back, uh, Scholastica is saying survival tips during these challenging times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, I am actually, and uh, my apologies by the way, um, I realized uh, that the link that I sent you for the agenda was incorrect. So I'm going to, I'm going to share that link right now if you weren't able to, to download it. Okay, so I'm just putting this in the chat. Uh, yeah, okay, so hopefully that warmed you up. Had anybody heard that song before, We Want Peace by Jal? I'll put it in the follow-up resources. Um, the video is, is amazing. Um, Kofi Annan is in that video, and yeah, it's an incredible, incredible video. Okay, let me go back. I'm gonna show you again here. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So just uh, let me know in the chat again if you can see the screen okay. Um, just let me know in the chat if you can see the screen okay. Okay, welcome Jacqueline. Jacqueline's just joining us. Great. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so um, lots of different things that people um, are wanting to know about team building. Um, and Margaret and Lillian are just joining us. Welcome, Margaret. Welcome, uh, Lillian. So just, uh, uh, just a couple of things before we dive into the, the topic, because I really want this to be um, a comfortable learning environment for you. So some things to, to keep in mind. Um, we are uh, recording. Uh, so the chat's being recorded, the audio is being recorded, and the video is being recorded. So I uh, will share those with folks. Um, just a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, if you are a UN staff person and you want to uh, get credit for this uh, uh, workshop, in other words, if you want to, it to count towards your UN mandated training, then make sure that you uh, fill in the attendance sheet. I'll put that at the end of the call, but it's also, um, it's also on the agenda. So you can link uh, on that link, uh, you can uh, get the link to the, agenda, to the attendance sheet. If you fill in the attendance sheet, that goes to the staff training and development unit, and they will credit this towards your, um, your annual training. There isn't a certificate or anything, but it does get credited. And I've mentioned a couple times about getting resources, so super happy to share the audio, the video recording, the chat, the PowerPoint. I have some goodies um, in store for you, so happy to share those, and know that members of the roundtable get those. So if you've signed up, um, if this little sort of turquoise globe looks familiar to you, um, that means that you are a member of the roundtable and it's the members that get those resources. So I will put that link at the end of our call today. Uh, just make sure if you do want all the recordings and all the resources, make sure that you've signed up to be a member. Um, and it's free. There's no, there's no charge for that. 
Um, okay, and that um, that is the link to 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 join. Um, if I can just, I don't think I can grab it off the thing. Yeah. Um, so again, I'll put that link in in a little bit later. Uh, know that when you RSVP for a meeting, because sometimes this gets confusing for folks, when you RSVP for a uh, individual meeting, that's not the same as becoming a member. So the screen that looks like this is when you, it looks a little bit like that. That's when you, uh, uh, when you RSVP, that's different than when you, uh, the screen to become a member. Okay. Um, I am looking forward to our next meeting, which is September 15, uh, September 18th, rather. Uh, and I really want to hear from you. One of the last things that we'll do today is I will put up a poll to see what you're most interested in, um, to talk about, uh, for our next round table. So a couple of ideas I had were, um, how to design workshops that are really inclusive, um, to share with you a bunch of tech tools uh, to increase engagement, um, how to do a learning audit, uh, what is micro learning, or maybe you're looking for something different, um, so something um, outside of those things. So again, I'll do a really, really quick poll at the end of our time together. So think about what would you like to spend your time here with us next month doing? Okay. Um, and here we go. So it's time to, to jump into our time with Jal. Um, and uh, he is one of my favorite, I'm gush, I know, I, I'm totally aware that I'm gushing, um, but he's really, really a special, special person. And uh, I feel really uh, fortunate that I'm able to share um, my time with him with you. So I asked him a number of questions and he graciously allowed me to record that. So I will show the video of our time together. Uh, and I'll stop the video every 10 minutes or so, so we can have some discussion because I want you to feel a real, as much a part of our conversation as, as I can. Um, but before we do that, um, uh, let me just show you. So I asked Jal, some of you, if you've been to other uh, uh, roundtables, this might be familiar to you. But when we have a speaker, I will ask them to give me a couple of things about themselves. And in Jal's case, um, he, he told me three things. And one of these things, uh, or sorry, two of these things are true. And one of these things is a wish. So two of these statements that I'm showing you are true, and one of them is a wish. So the three statements are, when I'm weak at something that I'm not great at, like focus, I tell myself I'm very focused, okay? Or behind the scenes, I'm a strategist, or I learn from anyone who's done anything wrong to anyone. So which one of those things uh, do you think is the wish? So in other words, the other two things are true. So just put in the chat there um, and just, um, uh, you can just pretend that they're numbered one, two or three. So, okay, so Andrew's saying the first two are true. Juana's saying number two is the wish. Okay, and, uh, Mary's saying number three is the wish. Uh, and so is Harpreet. Donna's saying number two. Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, is saying number one, Salima number two, or the first two are true. Okay, Kanako saying number three, Malcolm number two, number one. Okay, so it's all over the place. Okay, great. So here is what a little bit more about what Jal had to say. So um, he is working on, the first one is actually his wish. So when he's weak at something that he's not great at, like for uh, he tells himself, I'm very focused. Instead of beating himself up, he says, I am so great at this. And that's how he actually creates mantras. They're made of habits that he doesn't have, that he aspires to have. So I think that's a really great, um, a really great, actually simple, simple tool, right? To, to use if you're not good at something. You, when my kids were really little, I used to talk about their brain ears. I used to tell them that they had um, ears inside their brain and these ears weren't very they weren't very um, smart actually. So if we, if we told our brain ears that we weren't good at something, they would, um, they would actually believe it. So we had to be really careful what we told our brain ears. So 
I love this example of Jal talking to his brain ears and saying kind of the opposite thing and until it becomes true and then making a mantra out of that. Uh, so uh, in terms of strategy, he says, yes, um, I learn strategy every day so I can think strategically and behind the scenes, I'm a strategist. And then finally he says, yeah, I thought this, and when you know, um, I'm not sure how much you know about Jal, but Jal was a former child soldier in South Sudan. There's been a documentary, uh, a couple documentaries made actually. If you've seen the, the Hollywood film Lost Boys, um, that's about Jal's life um, with, uh, Reese, I, think, I think it's Reese Witherspoon who plays in that film. Um, so when he says that he learns from anyone who's done anything wrong to the world or to him, that is very, that's a very significant thing for him to say, considering what he's gone through. Um, and he learns from people who are great at what they do. I get inspired by that energy to actually make them want to use that power for good. I like to go for the extremes. Whoever defeats you, give them respect, but learn from them and stand your ground. Humble yourself and learn from them and stand your ground. So I think that's pretty powerful. Okay, so um, I'm going to queue up the video um, again, uh, or not again. Um, I'm going to queue up the video. And I, but before I do that, just let me know, is there any questions before we start? Um, before I start playing the video of the interview with him? Any questions at all about Jal? Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks, Velasica. Okay, so I, again, I'm going to start playing the video. It's about 35 minutes long, but I, that's sort of too long to do without a break. So I'll stop after about 10 minutes and see how you're doing, if you have questions, and then we'll, we'll continue again for another 10 minutes until, we're, until it's done. Um, okay, so I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, <clears throat> Okay, and just let me know um, in the chat. So I'm gonna take my photo off here. Okay, and just let me know in the chat, can you see a black screen? Just let me know in the chat, can you see a black screen now? Okay, great. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the chat up on my end and just let me know if there's any problems with the sound or the video. Okay, here we go. Hey. So, hello world. Uh, I am so excited. My name is Leanne Reagan, and I am the founder and facilitator of the Learning and Development Roundtable, where anyone at all in the world who's interested in learning uh, is welcome to participate. And today, uh, I have an extra special treat. I am here with an extraordinary, now he's super humble, so he might be blushing at this, uh, but an extraordinary human being who is a dear friend, an artist, a human humanitarian, uh, a musician, an epic dancer, uh, a meditator, uh, did I say humanitarian? Uh, and, and all of that grew out of uh, being a, a former child soldier. So I'm so excited today to introduce you to Emmanuel Jal. Welcome Jal. We're so honored that you uh, are spending time with us today. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Leanne, for making me part of your initiative, this learning table. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And Jal, I, I think that humans have a lot of complicated and multiple layers to them. And sometimes we get in trouble when we see people as flat and we see them as only one thing. But you, my friend, have more layers than most people. So how do you sum up who you are and what you're about? How do you sum up? Who is Emmanuel? So for someone who's never had the pleasure of meeting you, who is Emmanuel Jow? So uh, in terms of my skill, who I am, I would say I'm a creative mm. who creates experiences that gives people joy and happiness, mm. which means I tell stories, I make music, I come with content that can support people. And, and I would describe myself, that is, that is me, a creative that creates experiences that gives people joy. Mm. And what guides that is my vision. You know, I wanted to 
My vision is to share my experiences for social emotional learning, to create conscious global awakening. And that is through the arts, business and philanthropy. And somebody may ask, what is conscious global awakening? It's a state of awareness that raises your standard in thinking, planning, organization, empathy, self-development. So you expand your mind. Every experience that you experience, you look at it as a moment to grow. Mm, absolutely. And that would allow us to create the positive outcome we're looking for. Thanks, Jeff. That's, that's really well put. And, you know, I was thinking as I was getting ready for this, you know, as a, as a former uh, child soldier uh, in South Sudan, your life could have taken, you know, you're coming to us today from Toronto, Canada, uh, but your life could have taken a very different turn, including lifelong violence, uh, addiction, poverty, um, hatred, you know, all of those kinds of things. What, what were some of the key things that turned your life around to have this perspective of bringing awareness and, and peace and, um, you know, to, to folks all over the world? What, what one or two key things do you think turned that life around? It's a journey. Uh, a person don't change at once. Once bitterness is brought into you, one once hatred is put in you, once violence is put in you, it can turn you to become, how do you call it, a mess of cheese? Mm. Or it could make you a sadist. Mm, mm. Oh, okay, a masochist or a sadist, yeah. Yes, it can mm -hmm. either make, turn you to self-destroy yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rest of your life, you're just scratching yourself, you inflict pain. Mm -hmm. There's a journey in my life yeah. where I used to bite myself so hard. Mm -hmm. Just biting myself and focusing on that pain and it relaxed me. Mm -hmm. But that's the physical one. But, yeah. but this internal beating of self, blaming mm -hmm. yourself. Or it can make you a sadist where you see pain in others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went through those two journeys. One, which my desire was to kill as many Muslims as possible mm -hmm. because I wanted to revenge. The bitterness has an energy to take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have an opportunity to be able to actually get justice with your own hand mm -hmm. and you're overwhelmed, overwhelmed, now you turn into yourself. Yeah. And that become a self-destructive person. But there's the middle step, which is where we are supposed to be. How, there's two extremes, how do we come in the middle? Mm -hmm. Now, what I would say, which lay a foundation that supported me in my journey is, I always wanted to be a part of a solution. I wanted to be among those people Mm -hmm. who are making the world a better place. I would say like, there's a better thing for this. Mm -hmm. And I would credit my mom for planting those seeds in the early childhood mm -hmm. and where the destruction happened. And she'll say, we're all children of God. This disagreement is brought to us by the devil. There is goodness in everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can remember as a kid, we had Arab neighbors that were nice to us. Mm. When the Eid come, they bring us sweet and they bring us. Mm -hmm. So we, I, and it takes me to journey, okay, then what about this? Thing? So there's a confusion to be able to tell. But when yeah. hate comes, when bitterness comes, it occupies your heart and then yeah. your mental illness. Yeah. And so I would say the window was that wanting not to think about myself. Just thinking about myself was not motivating enough. It wasn't giving me enough motivation. Mm -hmm. But when I think about my sister, I think about the possibility that could happen where I would lie down. I used to play imagination game, and I'm sure every kid does this. Where I would lie down and I imagine myself as a pilot. Mm -hmm. I've never been in the plane, and I'll fly mm -hmm. up in the sky, <laughs> and I'll drop biscuits, foods, and then I like that and I'll feel mm. good. And then the next mm. imagination, I imagine myself as a teacher. Mm. Or I imagine myself like my dad, a commander in the field, and I'll see how that is. Mm. I have many soldiers and I'm mm. commanding and I'm freeing people. And all of those imagination 
helped me in my difficult times. Mm. But now, reality was in my face yeah. every time. And one of the things, this imagination, one time a question came into my mind where we were, we're starving, there's no food. Mm. You know? We arrive at this place, oh my God, this was a swampy place. Like we just, we were drinking our own urine mm. to survive, there was no water. We survived thirst, but now mm. we arrive, after surviving thirst, we arrive at a place that is a lot of water, but we can't find food. Mm. And as we're walking in this swampy ground, what happened is we were starving, that when a soldier fall down, that's it. You just see the bubbles. You just see the bubbles. There were so many mosquitoes that were swarming out. And, and they would lie in my face. You don't have time to do this. After they have settled down that you can rarely see, all you have to do is wipe them. And several times. By the time you go, it's like, it's like you've been in a battlefield because of blood that those those mosquitoes were trying to have. And some time I would lick them, but there were not enough energy. Mm. At this moment, I remember there was a, an elder, a, sol- a bigger soldier, a young child soldier fell down. And this man tried to, kneel, to, to, to bend down to try to help him. They drowned together. But mm. if you look at the water where they're drowning, it's not, to me, the water was up to here. Maybe to mm. the soldier, it was probably up to here. Mm-hmm. But just bending down, the energy just mm. to go down with the water mm. to get up, easy. Mm. And in this moment, we were all going to die in it. And a thought came into my head and said, why don't you grab those snails and eat them? Mm. Because there's a lot of snails mm. floating at and then when you find a little place up, you can cook them. So as I move slowly, so I begin to drop my luggage. For anything I pick, I have to lose something. <laughs> Isn't that a metaphor? <laughs> I have to lose. Yeah. I have to lose some of my bullets. I have to choose. Now I have this. I have this magazine. This one mm. is dirty. I throw mm. that away. Mm. So you, mm. you have to lose. What do you lose? So I had a lot. I stripped myself to almost less. Mm. So I could be able to carry the snails. Mm. So I carry some of the snails. When we arrive in this place, which is slightly a little tiny place, which is like a mount hunt, you know, like those little ants, they create a place, Mm -hmm. you know, water place, a little place. And we we light a fire and I ate my first snails. Mm. Others were laughing at me, but they joined. And that became our fourth meal. Mm. Mm. So... The questions that used to come in my head in this difficult time is, now you want to be that, what can you do now in this Mm. challenge? That's what matters. What can you do now? And that's the question that came that allowed me to get the snail. Yeah. But at a situation like that, there was another place where... Okay, I'm just gonna stop it there, just um, temporarily. Uh, let me just, um, it's a sack box. Sorry, just give me two seconds here. Um, okay. Anyways, um, okay, folks, uh, sorry, I was just trying to put my video back on, but it's not like, oh, I see, there we go. Okay, uh, so that's uh, a powerful, uh, you know, Jal's talking about some really uh, powerful things there. And my thought was to do a brief recap uh, and then to put you into small groups for 10 minutes to just kind of digest that because there's some really heavy things there. Um, Essentially, I was talking about, you know, all these different layers to people and how, you know, given what Jal experienced, the trauma and the poverty and the violence and, you know, being a child soldier, um, what, what allowed him to not descend into 
uh, a life of violence, addiction, you know, et cetera. So four things that I heard about, that I heard him say were thinking about um, beyond yourself. You know, he said that thinking about myself was not motivating enough. So thinking about other people. And when we're thinking about, of course, our teamwork and, and working with virtual teams, um, how can we do that? Number two, he talked about the role of imagination um, and pretending to be a pilot when he had never been in a plane at that point in his life and pretending to be a teacher. So how can we encourage the role of imagination on our teams? Uh, thirdly, the role of creativity. You know, the idea uh, out of desperation that he was eating snails and he'd never seen anyone do that, um, but he tried something, you know, wildly, wildly different. And then fourth, this idea of, he, you know, he started gathering as many snails as possible and he realized that he had to lose some things to gain some other things. So in your small groups, feel free to digest any part of that, that first um, part of the uh, interview with Jal. Uh, and if it's helpful, you might want to frame your conversation about thinking, how do you get teams to think beyond themselves? How can you encourage teams to be imaginative? How can you encourage teams to be creative? And what might we have to lose in order to gain something? So I'm going to put you into small groups. You'll have about 10 minutes um, to have a conversation. Uh, feel free, make sure you introduce yourself. Uh, and then uh, I'll bring you back. You'll get a one minute warning when it's time to uh, come back and then you'll automatically be pulled back to the large group. Um, before I do that though, uh, is there any, uh, any questions? I'm just looking in the chat here. Is there any questions? Um, there was also um, a point in the uh, uh, interview where he was saying a word that you might not have understood. He was saying the word masochist. Um, okay, so any any questions? Okay, so enjoy your breakout rooms and I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Okay, welcome back everyone from your first small group uh, discussion. Just as people are rejoining, um, know that I broadcast some of the questions um, that I had come up with based on the first 10 minutes of Jal's interview and I put those in the chat. Uh, and I also took that opportunity, I put the, the link to the UN attendance sheet, uh, the uh, learning and development roundtable member sign up link is in the chat and uh, a, a link to a page with background information about the round table. Okay, do you, does anyone have any comments before we jump into the next 10 minute segment of the interview? Any comments? If I may, Leanne? Yeah, yeah. Um, so our group was composed of Juan, uh, Mercy and Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. And uh, we learned uh, in general that in order to help people, um, we have to put we have to put our sensitivities aside in order to work with them, and that's something we all need to learn how to do is to make mm -hmm. a difference in communities, especially looking at um, Emmanuel Jal's life. Uh, um, we've thought about uh, how important it is for leaders and teams to look beyond themselves and look into their teammates' creativities and imaginations mm -hmm. and listen to different ideas. And, and also, it's sometimes you do lose something in order to gain something. And sometimes mm -hmm. you have to lose that empathy that you feel for these uh, communities that are going through all these hardships in order to, um, to help. Mm -hmm. And that's what our group came up with, with the Juan, Mercy, and Jacqueline. And if nice. they'd like to add anything, please. Nice. Mercy or Jacqueline, did you want to add anything? Feel free. And Juan. And Juan, sorry. Just while you're figuring out if you want to do that, I'll tell you a little bit of a funny story about Jal. Um, there was a, a, a conflict resolution uh, uh, professional journal that was doing, this was a few years ago now, and <laughs> They were doing, I just, I just find this so heartwarming. They were doing a special issue on arts um, 
and uh, peace, uh, conflict resolution and arts in Africa. So I messaged Jal and I said, hey, do you want to, you know, do you want to collaborate and put something into this journal? And uh, he said, yeah, sure. And I said, okay, uh, an idea I had, I'm completely open if you have other ideas, you know, happy to go with what you want to do. Uh, one idea I had was if you if you pick four of your favorite songs about peace and conflict resolution, and then I'll interview you about the story behind those songs. And Jal said, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I'm like, okay, great. So send me your, your top four favorite songs, you know, about peace and conflict resolution so I can kind of get ready, get some interview questions ready. And then we'll, we'll go from there. So Jal, the humble, humble, humble person that he is, sent me song, four songs by other people, not by him. <laughs> and I said, so I wrote back, I'm like, Jal, no, I mean your songs, like songs that you, you know, you've written. And I just thought that that's um, said so much about someone who really has this mindset about looking, um, looking to others and being humble. And, um, you know, that really spoke volumes about his character. Um, Mary put uh, in the chat, our group with Millicent Florence and Donna, think beyond self, think team, encourage, support each other and learn to adapt in different situations. Um, when to let go, um, work out through conflicts, et cetera. Yeah, and these things sound so easy to do, but you know, in, in practice, especially when we're stressed and, and we're having tough times, they're, yeah, they're hard to do. So it's really great to have those things in mind. Um, and that point about when to let go, one of my favorite sayings is if you can't fight, and you can't flee, flow. That's from the book, it's a, a very old book called As Above, So Below. And I think it's a bit of a take on the serenity prayer, right? So if you can't change something and you can't leave, how do we be okay with, with what's there, with what's left? Uh, Diana is saying suffering is a proxy for purpose and courage. Oh, interesting. Oh, Diana, we could really unpack that a lot. Um, please feel free to say more about that. Um, by the way, uh, was it, who said this? Love, oh, Max said, um, couldn't see the links. I forget that when you go out and then come back, you can't see the previous link. So I reposted the links to the attendance sheet, um, et cetera. Um, Catherine's saying, think beyond teamwork. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so with your permission then, I'm going to share my screen again, and we'll do the same process. So I'll show you 10 more minutes of the video, and then uh, you can spend some time in small groups discussing. Uh, so here we go. And just, um, if, you could, if a couple people could just let me know in the chat that the, that the sound is okay when it starts playing. We were also stopping on that tree. And that same question comes, why don't you eat that tree? If you don't die, come and share it with the rest. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I always do. I go out, I try, it doesn't mm -hmm. kill me, I share mm -hmm. it with the rest. Mm -hmm. So there's and something so there. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry, Jal. So there's something there about like lifting your head up, you know, amongst all of the horrors and the unbelievable atrocities that you witnessed to look ahead to tomorrow to where where you're headed to have a direction where you're going and then to also be very present in the moment to look around you for snails or edible trees or or things like that i, th I think that's a really powerful powerful balance of, of you know i think some people focus on one or the other so that's a that's a powerful lesson and i know you've taken all of those you know, those experiences and lessons that could have really made your life turn in a very different direction. And I know uh, recently, relatively recently, you've been working on um, a project called My Life is Art. Can you talk, tell us a bit about that? And like, where did that come from? Um, tell us a bit about that program. Um, we'd love to hear more. Well, My Life is Art is basically It's provide individuals or leaders with tools to think clearly and strategically to reach their potential, but also to manage their emotions and their thoughts and engaging them to create the life they want to create. So it's a 360 approach to life. So, mm -hmm. you know, it align your purpose, vision, and your mission with your goals. So it's a practice. It's not like I go for a workshop. No, it's about 
getting yourself into that practice. And the root cause of it is my childhood. You know, mm. life is full of suffering. And in that suffering, it gave our life no meaning. Mm. In that suffering, we can feel like we have no meaning. But when we find ourselves in that suffering, we find our purpose in that suffering, then our lives give us a meaning. Mm. So from what I understood in my purse is when we get to know our purpose, then our life, every experience has a meaning. No mm. matter how difficult mm. it is, it becomes an experience mm. that is just meant for Oh, I love that. I love that. And, and there's nobody who can take it. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge is we stick our emotions to the experiences that brought us pain. Mm -hmm. And that wrote us the value which those experiences have given us. Mm -hmm. it, cl it clouds it from seeing what the lessons were, what, what the... But it was there to teach us. The thing that most all about suffering is life can put you in provisional existence where you exist to suffer. Mm -hmm. You wake up every day, you're suffering. It's the worst thing for a person to get stuck there. Yeah. But when you know your purpose, that suffering is going to make you stronger and know yourself so you can respond to it. Yeah. Because yeah. the suffering is personalized to you to train you, to make you to become the best you. Yeah, it shows you, it opens now, up the path forward. Yeah, so when I was in Toronto, I reached, uh, each one of us one day will reach a point, a plateau, well, you're not moving at all. You're stuck. You're not growing. You have your purpose, yes, but your mind can't. Mm -hmm. So you're stuck in that part where you can move. So my projects were not moving properly. Nothing was moving properly. And then I asked myself, what did I do to get here? What was the thing that I used to do when I was in the jungle? Then mm -hmm. I realized I started writing down, oh, this is what I used to do. Okay, what did this do to me? Did that. Okay, when I was uh, 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 having traumatic experience, what did I do? I did that. When my yeah. mind was not working at that time, so I wrote down everything. Mm. And I thought, oh, this is what I did to get me here. Mm. Why did I stop? Mm. And then the, my life is sad was born the entire concept mm. and i started practicing it myself and mm. it started changing me and then the people around me to started to follow so in term of what i want to put it is what what trauma does it robs you everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i always ask a question who owns your mind is it fear worry anxiety or poverty who owns your mind because the battles are fought in the mind mm -hmm. and they're won in the heart. Mm. And whoever owns your mind owns you and everything you create. Mm. And so what I on my life, mm. as you can see, what on my mind and dominated my life, I had, yes, I had fears, I had worries, I had anxiety, I had poverty in my mind, unworthiness, shame, but what dominated each and every step of my life after I was able to be in a peaceful environment was trauma. And what is mm. it? I call it a soul murder, a mm. mental genocide, an mm. invasion of demons to occupy space in your mind. So you have flashbacks in the day and nightmares at night. Yeah. And where did it come from? It's rooted in my childhood experience. My experience yeah. of the past playing themselves at the moment. Look, uh, look. Mm. So basically, your My Life is Art project has taken all of the lessons, if I understand you correctly, that brought you forward uh, from that trauma, from that unspeakable atrocities and horror, uh, and made you into this incredible, healthy, kind, giving artist that you are today. That, that's what the My Life is Art project is about. Is that, is that correct? Well, 
it's, it's not just only about that. So there's what that allowed me to survive in that journey. Mm-hmm. There were two forces. One, I would say there was bitterness that did its job. Mm-hmm. So I was able to weigh the energy. What did yeah. I was bitter? It allowed yeah. me to finish my training. It allowed me to do difficult times. Mm-hmm. But there was purpose, mm-hmm. which was maintaining me. It was yeah. a different energy. So the battle was between walking in my purpose or walking in this bitterness that could make me a sadist. Mm. Mm. Or, um, uh, how do you call it, misochist? Ma- masochist, yeah, it's a hard word, masochist. <laughs> yeah, ma- yeah. Ma- how do you call it? Masochist. Mas- masochist. Yeah. yeah, so I, there's those two things. I, I turn to internally distract yeah. because one thing I came to realize is this. And, and I hope everybody understands this, is trauma, mental poverty, and high stress, they have one thing in common. They shut down the faculties of our mind that deals mm-hmm. with long-term projects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, these three things can turn us into self-destruction, into Mr. Uh, Chis or Sadis, mm-hmm. because they disconnect us from anything. They yeah. rob us our purpose. They rob us our value. They rob us our dignity. They stretch us down. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone may ask, what do you mean by stress? I would want to share a little stories. When I was in the bush, the life we had in the jungle was different. Mm. We say we face a challenge. The stress that came to us was like an ally. Hmm. It united your entire senses and, and all your focus is one. Energy hmm. to survive hmm. and everything is united again is that we do things well. Okay. Even to the point of defeat, you still focus. Hmm. No distraction. And then when you're defeated, you breathe. Ah, and you can say, what's next? What can we do next? You hmm. pick on. But mm. the stress in the Western country is not normal. It's unique in its own. Mm. And it is moving so fast to capture yeah. the rest of the world. J- Jal, I wanted to ask you about that in terms of, you know, some people hearing your story might think, um, you know, how, how can I relate to, a, you know, a South Sudanese child soldier? But I think one of the magical pieces about you is that you are so relatable. And I know that you do um, high level executive coaching. Can you talk a little bit about what kinds of stresses, what kinds of issues, what kinds of problems are your clients bringing to you? Well, human beings' problems are universal. Mm -hmm. But each one of them is unique to self. Mm -hmm. We've been born differently. Each one of us has a dream. Now, and each one of us dream is different. Each one of us has a purpose, but our purpose serves the collective purpose. Now, but it is zoomed into two things. There's two fundamental things. Each one of us, okay, we all have gifts that have been encoded in us. Mm-hmm. There's things that only us can do in this world. Yeah. Now, our dreams, our purpose, and our skills will not serve us best if we don't have the right habits mm. and the right beliefs. Mm-hmm. Every person that you see that has succeeded in life has a built-in motivating circuit. Mm. Mm. And the built-in motivating circuit is what separate everybody else. And, and what is it made of? It's made of limiting beliefs mm. and positive beliefs. Mm. In ourselves. Okay. Uh, so another uh, 10 minutes or so of Jal's um, I think amazing, hard, hard won wisdom. Uh, a couple of things that popped out for me there is this idea of, 
you know, lifting your head up and looking to tomorrow and having a vision as well as being very present for today. So I'm going to divide you up again uh, into small groups and you'll have about 10 minutes to chat. So that might be one thing you want to talk about. Also, Jal talks a lot about finding your purpose and walking in your purpose. How can we help our teams find their purpose? And then this idea of getting stuck, you know, that all of us have um, uh, experienced suffering, some of us more than others, of course, uh, but we can get stuck in our suffering and uh, it can cloud us to seeing the lessons of that suffering. So that's a third one. Um, fourth, he talks about stress as an ally and uh, how can we use stress to help us focus and, and give us energy to survive. Um, and then fourthly, he talked about this notion of um, how everyone, we're all universal, but we're also, um, everyone is at the same time incredibly unique. And how can we um, give our best gifts, dreams, purpose, skills, um, et cetera, through our habits and beliefs. So uh, once again, I'm going to divide you up into uh, small groups, take some time to introduce yourself. You'll have about 10 minutes. And then when we come back, we'll uh, watch the last bit of the interview. If, um, by the way, if I end up moving you from one group to another, it's because I see that there's no one else um, who's picked up in that group. Yeah. So, um, I just heard someone unmute. Was there a question before I divide you up? Any questions before I put you into small groups? Okay, so I'll do that now. Um, Okay, and here we go. Welcome back from your, your small group discussion. Uh, as you're coming back, um, I'm just putting some resources in the chat here from Jal, and I, um, I can put those again at the end of, the, of our time together, uh, the workshop today. There's his website, um, there's a 30-day challenge link there, and then the name of his app, so My Life is Art app. Uh, any, quick, any quick comments from your discussion? Anything you wanted to share before we go into the last bit of, of the interview with Jal? Anything you want to share? Okay, then uh, I'm going to share the screen again. And um, just if you can uh, put in the uh, put in the comments if you can see and hear the interview. I'll just replay it. So this one's a little bit longer, about 12, 14 minutes or so. In our self, you have your limiting beliefs. Yeah. Absolutely. You have your Positive beliefs. Yeah, and are those the kinds of things that you work that you work with people about? Is the the limiting beliefs and identifying positive beliefs and identifying one's purpose and and ways to keep going and keep motivating? Is that keep motivated? Is that the things that you work with people on? It's a variety. Each and every person can do their mental analysis mm -hmm. and a heart analysis. Mm. So you look at yourself deeply and you see what are the things. That's what I did. Yeah. I look at myself. What do I need to change? For example, focus. Let's talk about focus. Okay, I had trauma, yes. But my mental poverty became focus. Mm. Focus is like putting water to a seed. When you put a seed under a rock oh. and it comes under the cot, when you that. put a you put a, a seed under a rock and mm -hmm. put water on it. Mm -hmm. No matter how heavy that rock is, that seed will lift it mm -hmm. to live. Mm -hmm. So focus is energy. Whatever we give attention come mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. And now you could go on social media. Everybody's looking for attention. Yeah. That for <laughs> whatever information, because once you look, you get that person relevant. You yeah. give that person life. And those who have millions and millions of followers, 
they are only relevant. Imagine if nobody visits their page for a year, they would collapse. Yeah. And now that's why they have to engage mm. themselves. How do I engage them to focus on me? Mm. How so, do I shine brighter? So yeah. focus was an issue I had because mm. it was so difficult for me to do anything. So I had to put myself down. How do I create it? Mm -hmm. And it's the same, same formula that I used to overcome my trauma. And because our mind can be rewired, we can rewire our brain. Mm -hmm. And so I want to describe something quickly, mm -hmm. why habits and beliefs. So basically, once you identify and diagnose yourself what you want, for example, if it's focus, then you go on a, a meditation with an intention of bringing focus into your life. And we set them to create mantras about focus. We mm. see how, what feet reward them and they repeat that 200 times a day mm. for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Now, what would that do by, re by repeating it? It will what? It will activate their motivation circuit mm -hmm. and create a belief that they are actually focused. Once the belief is created, that's the first step, creating the belief. So that means you're letting the other belief, because the belief is what grounds it. So once they actually believe they are focused and it's put there, then now we can now back it up where they can go and do conscious learning. Mm. They feed their mm. Learn mm. about focus. Mm. The stories of people struggle with focus. How can I get focus? They are doing the mantras. They're learning the knowledge. They collect the knowledge. They collect the wisdom. Then the third step, because why do we get them to get stories? Because our lives are shaped by the stories we hear and our yeah. success depends on the stories we are told. Yeah. Guided meditation, which strengthened the focus of a child, was done by women, storytelling. Mm. I lie down on the bed and you tell mm. them a story. Mm. That's a guided meditation mm. which increased the focus of a child. Us mm. who were distracted by war. My mm. mom was pregnant when there's war, so we keep mm. running from one place. How would I gain focus? Learning begins yeah. from the belly. Mm. Each and every woman, if you're going to be pregnant, you need to know, okay, how am I going to live my life? Mm. If you're going to live calmly, that child is going to learn how to become. The learning begins there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think, oh, why is my kid head all over? Because your head is all over when you're with the child. And the child learns through observation and also through energy by observing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And so we go back into the roots of that. So we can now, by through repetition, exposing ourselves in that challenge, we are saving this knowledge. But mm. what actually, next step is practice, incremental step of action, mm. where they have to now practice to focus. Mm. Now, what will happen when they do those three things for 30 days? Mm -hmm. When they do that for 30 days, properly every day, what will happen is the brain releases something called neurotrophins. Mm. And the neurotrophins will create new dendrites in their mm -hmm. brain to absorb mm -hmm. those information for short yeah. term and save them for long term. Yeah. And what we're looking for in this process is something called myelin. Mm -hmm. The thicker it is, the better. Mm -hmm. That's what changes the life of a person. Yeah. And it can stay 30 to 50 years. Mm -hmm. So just imagine, if you were born without proper focus, without proper habits in your life, and you're a CEO of a company, you're going to carry that with you. Yeah. So the journey is, what are those habits, the bad habits that I have, and the bad beliefs, what could I do? And what do yeah. they do inside? What does the belief actually do? When you have the right belief in your head, what it does is, it becomes your internal voice. Yeah. For you, mm -hmm. your present and the past, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. show you the different fears and yeah. measure your emotion and reaction and allow you to make the perfect decision. Because our decisions, you see, our emotions, the summation of emotion we generate every day make our decision. And the summation of decision mm. we make every day create our future. Yeah. So there's no shortcut. Yeah. You so, have to do the best. Yeah, go on, sorry. So, no, it's great. It's great. And um, I'm just thinking of the people that will be watching you. 
um, you know, you, lots of UN staff and people from all over the world who are very mission driven and social change oriented and uh, are working in a variety of different ways to achieve that. So I love your, what, from what I've heard, your, it's really like a holistic uh, view of learning and really focusing on motivation and uh, habits and focusing on learning from the head and focusing on learning from the heart and emotions and putting that onto practice. And you've mentioned 30 days. And for those who are watching, I'll, I'll give you a bunch of links. And one of them is to Jow's 30 day uh, challenge. Um, so I'm just thinking, you know, you, you, you've lived in a refugee camp, you, you've been, you know, a child soldier, you, you've toured around the world, you've performed at the UN, you've spoken at the White House and many, many, many more things. Uh, and I know you're a super, super humble person. Uh, when you think about, you, you know, if we, th we think about this current time in COVID, you know, never have we been so far apart and distance as humanity with the ability to be so close, you know, through technology and all of these amazing tools that we have now. So when you think about all the experiences you've been through, uh, what, what advice or thoughts would you give to people who are working globally, um, who are mission driven, who are working for social change? What, what advice would you give to, to folks like that? What I'll ask is I'll ask question, what is mm. your purpose? Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because when you walk in your purpose with clear defined goals and a burning desire to act, mm. success, will follow you like your shadow. Uh. When you walk in your purpose, you're in sync with everything. Mm. Yeah. You are not alone. Mm. Every soul you touch has mm. your back. Mm. So when you walk in your purpose, you can activate joy and peace of mind every day. Mm. I live here alone mm. in my house. And some people would wonder, hey, Jao, we are worried about you. I'm saying, no, why? Because you're alone. I say, no. There are people who are with people and they're lonely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am here. I'm not lonely. I know, I know my purpose. I know my vision. I know my mission. Yeah. Yeah. So every minute, every day is priceless. Yeah. And I'm enjoying every day. Yeah. I have lost in the past. But my past has brought for me so much wealth because I'm not attaching myself to the pain. Yeah. I'm attaching myself to the value it's bring. Yeah. So with, with what I could say, what's your purpose? And I would say the next thing you could do is by knowing your purpose, then you can build everything around it. What's yeah. your vision? What's your mission? Mm -hmm. What is your daily, daily, daily rituals? Mm -hmm. How is your spiritual status? Mm. how is your emotional status mm. how is your mental status so again very very how is your social status? yes yeah yeah how is your physical status now how are you as a being are you looking at, at everything done? and then you need to do an adjustment and see okay yeah mm -hmm. there is work there's 24 hours a day suffering will continue to be there mm -hmm. how do you work strategically yeah. Are you investing in yourself? Do you have a moment for yourself where you just sit and do mm. nothing? Mm. I think I think I should. I think I need to create a checklist from those those things that um, that you just said. Those are really wise words. Words, and I love your comment about what did you say? When you know your purpose, success follows you like a shadow. I, I think that's that's impeccable. Um, just as we, we start to get towards the end of our time together for now, Jal, uh, I know you have an education pack that you, um, that you have available on your website. And by the way, to those um, watching us right now, I'll share all these links and make those available. I love how you talk about um, having people focus on thinking, on doing, and improving. So my last question to you uh, for now is, do you have one kind of top tip for thinking, one top tip for doing and one for improving? Well, for our mind to think to serve us better, it requires space. 
mm. because mental poverty, trauma, and high stress prevent us from thinking ahead. Like yeah. we're not able to be, see beyond a year, beyond a month, beyond what thinking it becomes difficult. Yeah. Because the left side of our brain can do a lot of the thinking. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to push it, so I would want to say, what are you doing about that? Mm-hmm. How are you expanding mm-hmm. that space to think? Okay. And that could mean you need to dance. Just yeah. go and dance, do a yeah. little bit of yoga and do a bit of breathing and then now come and think. Yeah. Then you'll be able to think because you've created space. I love that. Okay, so, so expand your space for thinking. Brilliant. Okay, and what about doing? Yeah. What's, what's your top tip for doing? Action. What Taking is it that action. is important to you? What yeah. is it that is really important? Action what is that's it that aligned you with your purpose. To this world? Yeah. What are you doing about it? What's your plan for the month, yeah. plan for the year, plan nice. for the week? How does it look like in 30 years? Yeah. How does that impact you, your family, and everybody yeah. around? The what are you doing world. about it? Nice. Stop running around. Just do it. <laughs> and focus. Focus. Right. Okay. And what about improving? The last one. What's your What's your top suggestion for, for improving and learning and growing? And... What is the habits you need to create mm. Mm. and the belief? Okay. You see, our minds automatically will always look for negativity. Mm. But it's our responsibility to look for positivity. Yeah. Because when we don't look for positivity, then our mind will create for us stories that yes. are not true. Yes. I call them uninvited guests. Yeah. Get rid of those yeah. uninvited guests. Okay. So you have to discipline it. How are you disciplining your mind? For example, yeah. my mind used to be so fun and it reminded me of a monkey. I saw a monkey with a, with a yeah. baby. Mm. So this monkey with their baby, the baby jump out. And the mom went to grab the baby and they walk around the baby, bite the mom and jump onto the tree. And the mom ran and grabbed the baby and give the baby a slap. And the baby was quiet, going, going to get, by the time she did, the mom was relaxed. The baby jumped off. <laughs> and I said, that's how my mind is. <laughs> how do I get it over? Yeah. So how do okay. you get to develop, to train your mind, even three yeah. seconds? Yeah. And so, like, if anybody's interested in tools like that, we have my Life is Ad Meditation okay. app, and they can download it and yeah. use it. I'll give a link to your website, your 30-day challenge, the My Life is Art app. Those will all be included. Um, Jal, I could talk to you, you know, anytime, anytime we spend together, I just feel like time you know, passes in a blur. So I want to say a heartfelt from my mind and from my heart. I want to say a focused, grateful thank you for your time and sharing all of this. And also a thank you from the Learning and Development Roundtable members who will be watching this. So thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank Uh, you, sister. Peace is you. (laughs) I'm sorry, I have to go now. Okay, there you go. It was lovely to see uh, to see your your comments in the chat there. Uh, so just to kind of sum up there that last bit, um, you know, Jal talks about so much, but you know, his advice to people working globally who are mission driven and social change is walk in your purpose. Walk in your purpose. Have clear goals. Uh, of course, this this applies to teams, of course, too. Um, and success will follow you like your shadow. Uh, try not to be attached to your pain of your past, um, but to build around it daily rituals, um, look at your spiritual, emotional, mental status, your social and physical status. Um, How are you as a being? Look at how you are as a being uh, and adjust. And his, in his education packs, you can see this on his website, he talks about thinking, doing and improving. Um, So his advice around thinking is creating space to think, uh, including by dancing. Um, And then, of course, taking action on things that are important to you and having a plan for your week, your month, a year, for 30 years, and improving, um, training your your monkey brain um, through habits and beliefs. So uh, just, and and again, this is all recorded. I know um, some people were messaging me privately about wanting to watch this like three times. So you can watch this, uh, watch Jal as as many times as you want. Um, And just as we shift into the next section, uh before we close today i don't know our time always goes so fast uh i'm just going to switch over to uh the powerpoint so just let me know in the chat if you can see the um 
the PowerPoint okay? Um, oh, and Wanda's saying the file I shared with you is from my balcony. Oh, it's, oh, a sunset. Awesome. Wonder oh, that's so great. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Okay, so um, I put these uh, links in the chat. Um, so feel free to take a look at those. And I just wanted to kind of wrap up, take some of the concepts Jal was talking about and give you a couple of more tools. So, um, should I just, so one of the things that uh, when I'm doing team building with teams, um, I call these fuglas. So you probably have heard of icebreakers and energizers and I go through this and other um, in detail in other roundtables, and I'll put links in those to the resources that I'll send you just as long as you're a member of the roundtable. <clears throat> uh, and when we're doing team building, if we use um, really, really good facilitated group learning activities, uh, learning can really pop. So I wanted to do one right now. Um, and this is, so this is a FUGLA, this is a facilitated group learning activity. And I wanted to, uh, get you, there's some, um, some da dashes at the bottom of the screen here. And uh, I wanted to get you to, uh, whoops, uh, why is that not working? Hmm. Just trying to get my video to show just, um, okay. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to pin my, there we go. Uh, so in the chat, what I invite you to do, so you'll see these, these six lines here, and these, each line represents a different word, or a different letter rather. Uh, so feel free to take some guesses um, to, to figure out what this word is that is your, uh, your uh, um, best friend and your worst enemy as, uh, um, uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to get the, the thing here. Uh, your best friend and your worst enemy when you're working in teams. So what is um, a letter that you think would spell this word? Um, Harpreet's asking, is it possible to share via email as well? Um, Harpreet, do you mean share the resources? Because yes, all the resources go out to all the learning and development members. Um, and you'll receive those next week as long as you're a member. And if you're not a member, just make sure to go through the chat there and find the link and click on the member link and join. Um, yeah, so yeah, so Harpreet, as long as you remember, uh, those resources will all come out to you. Um, okay, so one, Y is not one of the letters. Um, so good guess, what's another one? So someone guess a letter that, they, that you think goes on one of these spaces. A, A is a letter, yes. Okay, uh, good job, that was Katerina. Um, S is not, um, good guess, Sophie. Millicent, F is not a letter. Okay, I'm your best friend and your worst enemy. Okay, uh, F is not, R is not, M, yes, there's an M. A. There's an M right there. Uh, e is, there's no E, there's no R, uh, there's no I, uh, we have an M, yeah. What else do you think? There's no T, Diana, good guess. There's no F, Malcolm, good guess. Uh, okay, got a few more coming in here. Um, oh, there is a D, the D goes right there. Uh, there's no, oh, and we've got an N, yes, right there. Um, we've got an O, yes. Okay, can you guess the word? What do you think this is? We've only one letter left. An L, Christine, yes. Okay, so uh, the, uh, your best enemy and your worst friend is, yes, <laughs> Mary is an, is an almond. Because the Greeks named the part of our brains and you have two almonds in your head. Now the, Greeks, the Greek word for almond is amygdala. Okay, amygdala. And uh, amygdala means almond. And what happens is a lot of the stuff that Jal talks about is, is rooted in this. When information comes into our brain as a team member or any, any human, it hits the amygdalas and the amygdalas decide, um, can I eat it or is it going to eat me? In other words, am I calm? Am I relaxed? Am I okay? Then can I go on to critical thinking and being a good team member and collaborating and being creative? Or do your almonds or your amygdalas decide it's going to eat me, meaning I'm shamed, I'm embarrassed, I'm angry, I'm stressed, I'm upset, 
someone's just made a sexist joke or a homophobic or a racist joke, um, when those things happen, amygdalas get very upset and um, basically we focus only on fight, flight, or freeze. So when we're working in teams and doing team building, we want to really, really make sure that those um, that our amygdalas or our almonds are happy. So let me just um, just clear this, um, and then we'll go on to the next slide here. Um, okay. So um, you want to ditch the walnuts because, interestingly enough, you think, "What is she talking about? All these nuts." When we're upset, shamed, embarrassed, angry, stressed, afraid, all of those things, our almonds, the, the amygdalas in our brain, grow to be the size of walnuts. Okay, they actually get that big. So you want to you want to ditch the walnut uh, and keep the uh, so that that your that your almonds your amygdalas are happy. So. Um, when we're thinking about doing that, uh, for those of you who were involved in last week's uh, or last month's roundtable, uh, one of the things that I encourage the team to talk about when we're doing some small group work is what are the habits of highly effective virtual teams? So what are the habits of highly effective virtual teams? And what I did is I took all of those ideas and I put them into a word cloud. So word clouds, if um, these are new to you, uh, analyze text by frequency. So the bigger the word, the more often uh, that word was said. So communicate and communication, if you actually, those are super similar. So if we put those two together, those would be even bigger. So when Jal talks about being really clear on your purpose and your mission, um, these might be some things that you bring back to your team and say, hey, how, how are we communicating? You know, are we being proactive? Are we managing our time? Are we laughing together? Are we committed? Are we reliable? So this, you can use this as a little bit of a roadmap. Um, and I'll actually, what I'll do when I send all the resources out to members, I'll send this as an individual. I'll take a screen grab of it and put that in the resources too. So um, a couple of things to think about. We talked about ditch your wal uh, walnuts. <laughs> Ditch your walnuts for your almonds. So make sure that team members are feeling safe and comfortable. Um, and they're on top of all those things that Jal talked about, habits and knowing our purpose. Um, making sure you're using really good facilitated group learning activities, the FUGLAs. And then, of course, take time to rejuvenate. So um, I will send you, I have a, um, some rejuvenation cards that teams can use together. And that's a downloadable resource. So I'll put those in the follow-up resources so you can download those, cut them up into little cards and, and use them with your team if you wish. So we have covered a lot, a lot, a lot of ground. Um, you guys were brilliant and I super appreciate you taking the time to be with us um, today and sharing your insights and your ideas and, and to have a learning focused mindset because to learn something means that we don't know it, to admit it, to be, to be vulnerable and to look at new ways of doing things. So in our last couple of minutes together, um, I'd love to know how are you going to use your learning from today? If you want to put that in the chat. What's, what's I'm not sure I understand. Oh. Siri thinks I'm talking to, 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 to her. Um, she started talking there. So what's, um, for folks, what's one way, what's one way you're going to use your learning from the round table today? Feel free to put that in the chat. One way that you're gonna use your learning. Covered a lot of ground. Um, Jal brought up lots of things. Um, I talked a little bit about almonds and talked about um, making sure you rejuvenate. So Harpreet's talking using positive self-talk. Yeah, mindset. Yeah, it's so, so important. Jal really talked about that a lot. Um, I bid, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, um, improve on my purpose in life. Yeah, I have, there is a round table that um, focuses specifically on how to find your purpose, your why, um, how to pull that out of yourself if you haven't already done that. So I am just going to make a note to add that. So I'll put that links to that in the follow-up resources. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, 
John is saying, aggressively pursue my purpose. <laughs> That's great. Irene saying, uh, insight, focus, think about purpose, create positive habits. Yes. Um, Mary is saying, thinking, doing, and improving. Start today, positive mantras, and just do it. Want to start with me, personal journey. Brilliant. Oh, that's so great, Mary. Catherine saying, listening to your internal voice. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So important. Um, oftentimes, we don't realize how negative that self-talk is. And if you take time to listen to it and realize, and realize how ridiculous that internal voice sometimes is. Christine is saying, being that seed that is planted. Oh, between a rock and a hard place. And if watered, it germinates. Yes, Christine, and how he talked about how focus is really what helps that seed germinate for sure. Katarina is, I really love the quote you mentioned, if you can fight, oh, if you can't fight and you can't flee, flow. Yeah, since I'm in that situation, I will try to flow the best way I can, yes. Yeah, I think that's, it's really important to figure out what are you willing to, to fight? And by that, I mean, to try to affect social change, to work really hard, to, to change. What, what do you need to flee from? Because it's not important, it's not a priority, or potentially even it's dangerous, you need to not be around that. And then how do we be okay with the rest? How do we flow? Monica saying, expand my thinking space, focus and train my mind, brilliant. Dorothy is being optimistic, looking at positive in every situation. Donna is saying, walk in purpose, be present for today. Oh, impeccable. Juan is another day, sunshine and sunset. Yeah, um, I also want to put in, these are absolutely brilliant. And um, there is a big, big difference between um, having a really positive mindset and dealing with traumas and suffering. And it's not just about, you know, being a happy, shiny person. So um, Jal has done a ton of work to overcome and deal with his trauma and his suffering. Please, please, please um, also know that it's not just as simple as, as putting, you know, putting on a happy, shiny face. So make sure that you're paying attention, as he mentioned, to all of yourself, your mental being, your spiritual being, your um, physical being, etc. Um, David, in times of stress period like now, COVID, I'll try to stay focused. Yes, brilliant. Kanako, be responsible for creating positivity for myself and others. Um, Juan, positive thinking. Millicent, finding purposes and challenges. Oh, that's so good. And evaluating my thoughts. Um, Salima, if you can't fight, flow. Yes. And Juan, uh, and be on myself. Malcolm, be a positive force for change. Oh, yes. Uh, Catherine, re reactivate my motivation and meditate about it. Yeah. Jal spends, um, he's really, really, really big on meditation. That's an important part of his life. I know we didn't talk too much about that in the interview, but I, I know that about him. Uh, and Doris is saying, identify my purpose. I'm walking the talk. Yes, yes, yes. Walking the talk. Fantastic. Okay. So um, obviously lots of things uh, uh, to apply there. Oh, and Scholastica said, when you know your purpose, success follows you like a shadow. Isn't that brilliant? I got so excited when he said that. I, I think I'll make a meme out of that. Of course, crediting him. Um, yeah, it's, I think that makes a difference. When you know your purpose, you are filled with that higher sense of calling and uh, it's much, much easier to stay focused um, because you more easily know when you're on track or off track. Okay, so as we come to a close here, we talked about a lot of different things. Um, Emmanuel's, I thought it was amazing what he had to say, um, his, his responses to my, my questions. Um, think about how you can get your team focused on learning these, these facilitated group learning uh, activities. Um, really pay attention to your team's uh, amygdalas or almonds, especially in times of stress. How do we keep those almonds or our amygdalas feeling calm um, and, and welcomed and safe? Because it's really, it's pretty much impossible to learn if we're feeling scared, embarrassed, shamed, frightened, you know, etc. cetera. Uh, Mercy saying, uh, understand that our brains are inefficient machines that can make decisions based on our emotional whims. Yes. Yeah, sometimes our brains are super efficient and other times not so much. Uh, and you know, in, terms, in terms of purpose and vision, know where you're headed with your team. So have a sense. You may want to download um, the infographic that I'll send to you that in terms of what does a, you know, a healthy virtual team look like. And then feel free to download the cards that I'll send you. So ways to rejuvenate a team when, when we're feeling overwhelmed and, and stressed and we're having some, some challenges. 
Um, I will send you a ton of resources. Um, I'll send you the PowerPoint, as I mentioned, the audio, video, and chat recordings. I'll send you the links to the cards, those re rejuvenation cards that you can download and then cut out. Um, and I'll send you links to last round tables about more teamwork and finding your purpose. Um, you just need to make sure, make sure, make sure that you're a member because that's how you get those resources. Um, at the very end of the call, I'll repost those links uh, so they're easy for you uh, to assess if you haven't already done that. Um, I'll send you some online games, some things to help, but the prior things for things to help you learn. I'll send you some things to help you laugh, um, and I'll send you some things to help you, you lead. Um, this is the link to, to sign up to the roundtable if you're not already a member. Again, at the very end of the call, I'll put the link in there. Uh, and uh, if you are a UN staff and you want this to count to your UN mandated training, make sure that you fill in the attendance form. That's how the staff training and development unit uh, captures that. And September 18th, mark your calendar. That's when we are getting together next. So uh, I just wanna take um, another couple of minutes here uh, to put up a poll. Um, I would love, love, love to hear what do you want me to do a workshop on next month on September 18th? So I'll put up a poll in just a second. Um, but in the meantime, if you need some help with team building, um, diagnosing some issues with your team or doing some team building online, um, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'd love to support you and help you with that. Uh, and a big, 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 big thank you. So uh, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate these are difficult times and it's really, really lovely to have you here. So don't go away, don't go away yet. Um, I would love to share this poll with you because uh, I want to uh, make sure that I'm meeting your needs. So I'm just launching a poll here. So you should be able to see it on your screen. And please let me know uh, for, for September's roundtable, do you want me to do a workshop on how to design workshops that are really inclusive? Um, do you want me to share some tech tools that, are, that really help with engagement? Do you want me to share how to do a learning audit? Do you want me to um, do an introduction to micro learning or something else? And if you click something else, please put it in the, in the chat because I would love to know. Um, uh, uh, Juan has sent, it, sent me a private message. Thank you, Juan. That, that's really, really lovely. Um, Harpreet, you're so welcome. It's so, so nice to see you here. I'm, I'm delighted that you, that you are here. So um, yeah, just take a couple minutes there. Um, I, I'm going to officially sign off. I'm going to stop the recording right now, but don't go away. I'll hang around. Uh, I'm just going to put a couple more links in the thing. So this is it for the August 21st Learning and Development Roundtable. Hope to see everyone next month. I'm going to sign off for the recording. Thank you and bye-bye.